You're watching Medfield TV. Hi, I'm Rick Cram with another example of what it looks like when the people who plan to be their best as they navigate change are going to be the most successful. Here I am with Ron Yates, the co-founder and chairman of New Life Furniture Bank in Massachusetts, and we're here in the setting of their warehouse in Walpole, Massachusetts, and it's a, the place where a lot has changed over the past uh, number of years. And one of the th reasons why I wanted to talk to you was because your story and what you're doing with New Life is such an example of how when people who do plan to be their best as they navigate change, uh, they're more successful that way. But your mission is about encouraging other people to also be their best, to help bring it to life by donating furniture, uh, by donating their time, by donating their money to make it happen. Would you take a moment and describe what your mission is? Okay, the <clears throat> mission for New Life is to accept gently used furniture and yes. household items. Mm -hmm. We make them available at no cost to people that are transitioning out of a homeless situation. Mm -hmm. Yes, and your five years, five and a half five years, and a half years young. young. And describe for, for us what you would see as, how, you, how would you describe the, the changes that you're seeing right now? Well, we've had a lot of change in five and a half years because of our phenomenal growth. Mm -hmm. um, it keeps growing and growing. We're serving more and more clients every year. We have more and more volunteers. Um, so the, just the expansion of what we're doing just creates a lot of change in itself. The last time we talked about the impact last fall, I remember the number being 1,700 families served or? Yeah, we call them households because households. we serve a lot of single yes. heads of households. Yes. Yeah. So if it was 1,700 then, what is it now here? Right now it's something over 2,000. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So if that's over the course of five years, 1,700, and now at five and a half years, to have accelerated that much, yeah. what, what's driving that accelerated pace? Well, well it, the need. <clears throat> the need is enormous for people coming out of a homeless situation mm -hmm. as they acquire housing. There are so many homeless people in Massachusetts, yeah. it's astounding. Yes. And there are any given night, there are 13,000 homeless people mm -hmm. in Massachusetts. Yeah. More astounding to me is that there are 750,000 families living at or below the poverty line. <laughs> they could lose their home with an illness, a loss of a job, mm -hmm. something unforeseen that happens. And that seems to be happening more and more. So this is a huge problem, and it's not going to go away for a long time. When did you first be become sensitive to this problem and the need? Well, I've been sensitive to it for a long time mm -hmm. because I've spent 30 years volunteering for Habitat for Humanity. Yes, yes. And we weren't dealing with the homeless population, but we were dealing with people who were trying to get into their first home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, New Life was modeled after Household Goods in Acton, Mass, mm -hmm. where my wife Barbara and I lived for 27 years. Mm -hmm. And so I knew a lot of the people there, and I knew about that operation, and I always thought that someday that would be a good thing to replicate after I retired. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So uh, some retirement. You, yeah. you haven't slowed down at all. Yeah, no, not at all. You and Doug Marshall uh, launched New Life. Yes. Tell me about what it was like to, to get it up off the ground. Well, it was it, it got off the ground very fast. Um, Doug and I put we visited Acton first of all. Mm -hmm. and we put together a business plan, but the folks at Acton Household Goods helped us. They mentored us. Mm -hmm. They gave us all of their procedures. Uh, we saw their process. They told us what to do, what not to do. Mm -hmm. As a result, we started very fast. Just uh, ignited. It, it did. It, yes, yes. yes. Uh, and what, what in your past, as the head of Walchem, for example, helped prepare you for what, you're, what you've been experiencing with New Life? Well, I've, I had years of experience managing an organization mm -hmm. that is growing and dealing mm -hmm. with new technology and new markets mm -hmm. and something always new, which yes. means a lot of change. Yes and working with people to affect that change. So I've had that experience, I've just been able to apply it to new life. With all that experience, how do you view change, Ron? Change is constant. Yeah. It's always there. Yeah. Um, I don't care if it's a, a for-profit company, non-profit, mm -hmm. within your family. 
Um, change is there. It's always going to be there. It's always going to happen. Yeah. The key is, do you embrace it and accept it? Yes. Or do you shy away from it? Yes. As the head of the company, how would you help prepare your teams to navigate change? Yeah, first, you have to prepare yourself. <clears throat> yes. Good. So you have to have a deep understanding of in the business world, the market mm -hmm. and the competitors and the trends. What's mm -hmm. happening out there that's kind of driving this change? Or if you're sharp enough, you can see out into the future to mm -hmm. see what's going to drive the change. Yes. In a nonprofit, it's very similar. We, we need to know all about the clients we're serving mm -hmm. and the agencies that send us the clients and what's behind their need yes. and, and what's the impact and we can help them. Mm -hmm. So. Having that data and being really familiar with it defines the market, defines the problem. Yes. And then in talking to other people who are related, whether it's a, mm -hmm. an agency or an organization similar to us mm -hmm. or the agencies we deal with, you get a feel for what's needed and where things are going. Once you have that embedded personally, then you have to communicate that to the people that surround you. Yes. And in new life, it's volunteers. Yes. And um, sometimes it takes a while. You know, people sometimes don't have the same vision, so you really got to help them understand it. Yes. And, yes. and uh, encourage them. Yes. Always encourage them. Absolutely. And once uh, once they grab hold of it, you know, things will start to move. Yes. When they grab a hold of it, they're, they're embracing it. Yes. And then they can truly, fully be part of the mission yes. in a very practical way. And that's the key thing. All, the people have to be involved in the process. Yes. The people you're going to rely on. Yes. You, you can't do it yourself. You can't tell people what to do. Right. They have to believe in it. They have to be involved. Yes. Which is one of the reasons why the listen strategy and plan to be your best as you navigate change is the second strategy. It's yes. so important, whether it's, as you were describing with the company, to garner all that information yeah. that you need, yeah. but also to help others uh, when you share the information to get the perspectives on the same page yeah. and having a shared vision for, for the plan. I agree. I, I've always felt that listening yes. was one of my most important attributes personally. Yes, yes. And um, the ability to listen and listen even between the lines yes. has served me very well throughout my life. Let's let's uh, draw a couple of pictures, one perhaps, uh, and see if they parallel a bit between what you did as a, the leader of Walcam as well as your leadership here with the nonprofit. Was there a particular example of a time when you needed to listen more intently or navigate a change in a, an especially challenging way at on the corporate side? There was a point in time, it was in the early 1990s, mm -hmm. when I felt we had to change our business model quite mm -hmm. dramatically. Yes. Um, at that time, 40% of our business was serving as a distributor, mm -hmm. a master mm -hmm. distributor in New, Eng New England yes. for LMI metering pumps. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we had a joint venture relationship with a competitor of LMI in Japan, the Iwaki Company. Mm -hmm. And they had not brought metering pumps into this market in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So we had an opportunity to go beyond New England to, to market this type of product in, in North America and South America. Mm -hmm. and, and we knew it was going to take some time because it was an unknown product. At the same time, we were investing heavily in our own technology, which was um, analytical controllers and instruments. Mm -hmm. you know, we were actually inventing some leading edge technology. Very good. And we were putting a lot of money into that. So I knew that we were going to lose a substantial source of income because LMI would pull the line mm -hmm. from us, mm -hmm. which they did. Yes. Uh, and at the same time, we were investing a lot of money in technology. Yes. So our cash flow for a few years was going to be pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it took a lot of uh, work yes I and, imagine and convincing so. people and uh, relationships yes you know, uh, we had a great relationship with the Japanese mm -hmm. they trusted me mm -hmm. that's the other thing about change yes and, and I always I try and tell people it's the most important thing you can have is integrity yes and if people believe you 
Mm -hmm. they will back you and you can make things happen. Yes. So th they allowed us to delay our payments to them substantially wow. so we could get through this rough time. Yes. But he's even able to convince the bank to work with us. Yes. And you know, don't be a normal bank or think creatively. Yes. You know, there's a good future here. Yes. And it was because I was honest with them and open and transparent through this whole process. So important. Good. So we went through this massive change. Yes. And it was very successful. That's that's fantastic. So I can hear through the lines, between the lines, how encouraging you must have been to everybody involved yeah. to see the the, the long-term vision yeah. for these changes. That's crucial. You yes. have to be able to believe in it yeah. and then articulate it well. Yes. And, and again, if people believe in you, then they'll get behind you and support it. Yes, yes. So I can tell also that you are committed to this. You saw that these changes needed to happen. Yep. And in effect, you were asking other people to commit as well to mm -hmm. it, which is a, a major, sometimes a not so easy task. Yes, it's not easy. Yes, yes. Not, nothing is. Yeah. Nothing is. So likewise, with New Life Furniture Bank of Massachusetts, is there a similar story where there's been a time of change and you've needed to, again, be encouraging and bring people together too. Yeah, not in the same sense because mm -hmm. in five years, I mean, it's been all organic growth and mm -hmm. um, we don't have a strategic plan yet. We haven't had time uh, to develop one. I was going to ask you about that. <clears throat> and uh, because we've been growing so rapidly, the change comes from the growth. Yes. You know, we're expanding in all facets of our business. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about the concept of change in people, the key is getting a number of folks to accept the fact that we're going to just keep growing. Mm -hmm. And we can't say, oh my gosh, we can't do this because we don't have enough of this or enough of that. We got to figure out how to get enough of this or enough of that yes. to, to keep it going. Yes. So that's the change here. Yes, yes. Just curious, how much is what you're doing with New Life Furniture Bank um, in the equation for finding a solution to homelessness. Where does that, is that factor in the conversation? Is that something that you're involved with as well? Well, <clears throat> because we're dealing with the homeless population mm -hmm. and we're dealing with over 100 agencies, social service yes. agencies that refer us yes. people, we are gaining a lot of knowledge, in-depth knowledge about the homeless situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we're in a position as we go forward, and this will be another change, mm -hmm. where we can develop some programs to educate the people in the suburbs about homelessness yes. and what can be done about it mm -hmm. and how they can advocate for change. Yes. How are you working with the agencies, the over 100 agencies yeah. that you, you work with to address homelessness, perhaps as a group? And we try and work as closely as we can with them. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the issues with over 100 agencies mm -hmm. is uh, they also have a lot of turnover. Oh, do they and really? So we have yes. always different advocates at the agency working with us. So yes. we're constantly having to educate. But that's, we that's like a lot to, of work. Yeah, and, and one of the things that we need to do going forward, we do some of this, is deal with people at the top of the organization mm -hmm. so they mm -hmm. really understand how we can help them and what they need to do to allow us to help them. Yes. So uh, that's a that's a project going forward. Very good, very good. You're very you're very inclined to being responsive to them. What are your needs here with with New Life? Well, our needs fall into uh, I guess three basic categories. One is furniture. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean we keep growing, and as we grow, we need more furniture. We know from experience now that the average number of furniture items that go out per household is 12 to 13. Is it really? Yeah. It is. That doesn't account the little stuff. So that's furniture. All right. So it's not just a sofa here and a dining right. room table there. Yeah. So if you say we're going to serve a thousand clients yeah. a year, wow. then multiply that times 12 or 13. Yes. And that's how much we have to furniture we have to bring in. Yes. Wow. So that's um, an amazing amount. It yes. is. Yes. And 60 percent of our furniture comes from Walpole and Medfield. Mm -hmm. The surrounding communities make up the rest of it and we haven't done a lot of promotion in those other mm -hmm. communities because mm -hmm. we couldn't handle it yet. Yes. But yes. as we continue to grow, the furniture is out there and we'll be able to acquire more furniture from yes. these communities. Every time I come here, 
it seems like there's more furniture, yeah. somewhat a different layout, yeah, yeah. and you need to expand at some point. Is well, we've been expanding continuously. Yes. I mean, we started in a small corner, and now we've got this whole floor. Yeah. Um, it's, we're going to have, we have friends that we make along the way. Yes, good, and, good. And we've got a, a friend who's in the distribution business, mm -hmm. and he's going to come in here with some of his folks, and they're going to analyze how ah, we do things yes. and see if we can do things a lot more efficiently. Excellent. So Excellent. we have to be more efficient sure. with, with what we do. Certainly, certainly. And there are very, two other factors good. that we need. Yes. One, one is volunteers. Yes. And right now, the most limiting factor we have is volunteers. Mm -hmm. We need mm -hmm. more and more volunteers, not only on Saturday mornings when we operate, but mm -hmm. during the week. Yes. And so that's, that's vital to support our growth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, money. We, yeah. we always need money. Yes. But we're very efficient with it. Our budget this year is $326,000. Mm -hmm. I estimate that we could serve 2,500 households a year for under $500,000. And that's not a lot. So if you do it on a household basis, mm -hmm. we can furnish a complete apartment for just under $400. Wow. And as we grow and absorb some of the fixed costs we yes. have, that number will go down to less than $300 per household. Amazing. Which Amazing. is an impact. That's, yes. that's pretty serious. So whether you're donating furniture, donating your time as a volunteer, or donating money, you're having a real impact, making a difference in people's lives. Yeah, and of course we are helping the donors with donating furniture mm -hmm. yeah. because they have found an outlet for it and it makes them feel good because it's going to a worthy cause. Yes. And by the way, we've kept almost 25,000 pieces of furniture out of landfills. Oh, so wow. we're yes. a very green operation when yes. you think about it. Yes. So while we're on this topic, how can people best get a hold of all of you at New Life. Yeah, the best way is to go to our website. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a good, robust website, mm -hmm. and there are tabs for volunteering and donating, and there's information mm -hmm. there. Very good, very good. Yeah. The need's there, and you're doing great work, really yeah. great work. And the thing that has happened that we did not expect, mm -hmm. you know, how much planning you do, there's always something you don't expect. Yes. And this has been a very positive thing. We've actually been building a community here. Yes. Volunteers come here from different communities, different mm -hmm. churches, different mm -hmm. organizations. Mm -hmm. They get to know each other. Yes. You know, if they come back more than once, they make new friendships. And it's a community around a shared purpose. Yes. And that's been really fun to yes. watch. How do you see their engagement together? They're, they're all contributing yeah. together to, to make some good they're things happen. They're contributing, they're interacting, they're yes. sharing stories. Uh. You know. Yes. Yeah. One of the stories that I'll never forget is when I was first getting involved to help out in, in the background a bit and how an eight-year-old boy he was here and making a comment of how he's going to get his first bed ever. An eight-year-old yeah. boy about to get his first bed in his life. So that's, that's yeah. an impact. That You're is. making a difference. Yes. Profound stories. Mm -hmm. Is there a recent story perhaps of uh, either a volunteer, a donor, or a client that has stood out? Oh, there's so many. I can't. I can't remember one yeah. in particular. Yeah. Um, I don't work as closely with the clients mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. other people do. Yes. But we have a book, a, a binder mm -hmm. of stories that we have collected. Yeah. that are fantastic. Which, this will be another change. If you want to talk about change. Yes. We need to find a way to be able to go into some of the homes of people who have received furniture mm -hmm. from us mm -hmm. and interview them. Yes. And have them talk about the impact that having a home and having the furniture has made on their lives yes. in terms of health, education, mm -hmm. self-esteem, whatever. Yes. And this has social policy implications beyond just giving people furniture. I follow you. And, but a lot of our clients are not very comfortable having mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. us come into their home. They're not even, they don't even like to be photographed. Yes. You know, they don't want to be made public yes. where, where they've been. I mean, mm -hmm. Some of them have been with uh, spousal abuse or horrible mm -hmm. situations mm -hmm. and they just want to get quiet. But I think we can find enough people, we don't need many, yes. so that we can, we can shape a much stronger story yes. about the impact that we're having. I can imagine how the stories will be profound coming out of that. They, they would be. Yeah. yeah, and I, we've had an agency that we work with. Um, we surveyed a number of them in the fall, and they said that when their clients 
receive a voucher for housing, mm -hmm. or they get housing somehow, mm -hmm. they're very happy. Yes. When they come here and get furniture, they're ecstatic. Because yes. now they can call it a home. Mm -hmm. It really feels like a home. Yes, yes. Uh, from a couple of the clients that I've talked with, uh, I, I get that. They, I, they do express that. There's this uh, abundance of, of joy, actually. Yeah. It's yeah. foundational for them. Yeah. And to be sure, uh, outfitting what is truly a home, not just a house, yeah. a home is foundational. And, and must, must be um, a tr powerful catalyst for what they experience moving forward after coming out of such a difficult life it experience. Is. It's very powerful and there's a lot of it we don't really understand either. Mm -hmm. um, we know of stories where people have received their housing, they've received their furniture, but they've been so used to living on the street mm -hmm. or in shelters mm -hmm. for so many years, mm -hmm. they don't sometimes stay in the apartment because it's overwhelming for them no emotionally. Yes, you know? yes. And so they, they go back out on the street to see some of the people they knew. Yeah. So it's, it sometimes takes them a while yes. to make this transition. That is a major transition. Yeah. Wow, that's powerful. That's powerful. Yeah. Um, thank you for sharing all of that. Um, let me go back to the, the question about planning. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be creating a strategic plan. Yes. What is your, what's the first thing that you'll do to initiate a strategic planning process? Yeah, call our executive director and say, Rich, it's time for a strategic plan. That'll do it. That'll do it. <laughs> yeah, now planning is one of my strengths. So yes. I'm always planning. And I know how to do a strategic plan and what the elements are. Mm -hmm. So the first step is to collect information yes. about what I call the market, yes. which are our clients. People don't like to call it that, but that's the way I see it. Sure. And where, where is that going? What are the trends? Mm -hmm. What can we plan for? So you're listening. Yeah, li listening is key. Talking to, uh, we did a survey, and we're not finished yet because people keep coming to us. Peer furniture banks around the country. Mm -hmm. We have a survey, and we collect data. How are they doing things? How large Good. are they? How do they approach this problem and so forth? Yes. And then um, there are the factors like the, how much furniture do we need? Like mm -hmm. I said, 12 to 13 pieces per mm -hmm. family. If we grow to a certain level, you know, what does that mean? How much do we take in? Therefore, how many donors do we need? Mm -hmm. um, how many days do we need to stay open to accept furniture? Yes. Um, all that goes into developing a plan. Truly being analytical, getting yeah. all the information you need, yeah. and then working it. Yeah, and, and working it with our board of directors. Yes. You know, and our staff, our small Small staff, yes, which yes. is a combination of a, a few part-time paid people mm -hmm. and volunteers. Yes. And it goes back to what I said earlier. You've got to involve all of these people in the process. Yes. And you've got to get all of their thoughts out on the table. Good. And then, then you can put together a, a more meaningful plan, plan, and they'll own it. They'll own it. That That's, I was going to ask you, what's yeah. the single greatest benefit to involving as many people as yeah. makes sense, but as many people as you can yeah. in the process. Yeah, that's the key. Yes. They have to own it. They'll and buy into it when they're yes. part of the process. That's right. Yes. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. The, the work that you're doing is amazing. And you've got these incredible stories of how it looks when your mission is, is truly thriving and doing what it's designed to do. It's, it's at its best when it's serving the, the clients and providing uh, dynamic experiences for volunteers and donors and, and so forth. How do you know when, and what does it look like when you are at your best? Here at New Life, I feel that um, I'm on at my best when volunteers and staff are very actively engaged mm -hmm. and they feel rewarded by what they're mm -hmm. doing. And to me, that's, that's the single most important thing. Yes. And yes. then collecting the stories from our clients and seeing the impact we have. Yes, very good, very good. Has it changed when you think about what it means and what it looks like to be your best? Has that changed over the years for you? Not for me personally. Mm -hmm. you no, know, it's always been uh, working towards a plan. Yes. And um, getting people involved and behind that plan yeah. and then seeing it happen. Yes. And watching the results. So what are the good things that come about from a planning process? Well, it really keeps you focused. Yes. You know what the important things are and what the things are less important mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. So it, you stay focused on the important things and you have very strong goals 
and I always like to make make them stretch goals. Yes. You know, people yes. will sometimes say they're not achievable, and I'll say that's okay. It's an aspiration. It's yes. a stretch. Good. What thought process do you need to go through mm -hmm. to reach that goal that's way out there? It's one of the reasons why the bold strategy is part of the methodology. It includes strategy questions such as, what path forward requires the greatest amount of courage? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's always think some big. risk. Yes. Yeah, you yes. have to think big. Yes. Actually, that's a good point. There's always risk. Yes. You never know if, if truly nothing is certain. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But, but planning at least provides the focus and the best chance yeah. to being successful. And it gives you the framework to adapt if something happens that you didn't expect. Yes, yes, yeah. right, right. Yeah. I like to think of how when we plan, we're planning for right now and certainly for the future. But plan, the future can bring about and will bring about changes. So once a plan has been established, it becomes a perpetual effort yeah. because things will change and yeah. more planning will yeah. be necessary. Yeah to respond to those changes. Yeah, I'm a firm believer in not developing a plan and then putting it in the desk drawer. Good, good. Um, I like to review it in six month increments. Yes, yes. Especially these days, because the mm -hmm. world changes so mm -hmm. fast. So what's changed in the environment over these last six months, both external to us and internal? Yes. And does that need, to, does that mean we need to change our plan mm -hmm. or adapt or make a course correction. Yes, very good, very yeah. good. Uh, we were talking about that quote by Walt Disney. I'm not sure yeah. when he said it, but it was something along the lines of always being focused on the future because change is happening so quickly. Yes. And uh, now that was easily 50 or more years ago yeah. when he said that. And we're talking, there's so much in the media today and yeah. in business about how change is happening at a faster yeah. rate than ever. That yeah, is. So it's, it can be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ron, were there any particular points that you wanted to, to share that we haven't talked about yet? No, I guess if you really want some client stories, ask Barbara. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. She can give you some good details. Uh, she is wonderful with the clients, face-to-face. Yeah. Yeah. -face. I know that yeah. every, every one of the people that are involved yeah. with the organization, along yeah. with Barbara, and the way they, yeah. they are so respectful yeah. and caring yeah. to the clients, yeah. That's, that speaks volumes yeah. about, about part of your mission, to be yeah. sure. Well, the only other thing I would share is that mm -hmm. there are so many opportunities here for volunteers. Yes, yes. Uh, that people are interested in serving. And yes. um, I like to say we're going to expand two ways. Yes. Vertically, by serving more clients, mm -hmm. but also horizontally by interfacing and collaborating with other agencies. Yes. And we can be really creative there. Yes. and do some really interesting things Fantastic. under this whole umbrella of the homeless population. Yes. That creativity is so good. Yeah. It makes, makes things possible. Yeah. yeah. And, and people respond to yeah. good, creative right. ideas. Yeah. That's attractive. That brings them in. Right. Very good. Very good. Starting a youth leadership program. Oh, yes. I am trying to recruit eight kid, high school kids. Yes that I can train to be supervisors here in the warehouse wow. for the various roles. Excellent. And then out of that group, create an advisory board of youth. Yes. That'll meet twice a year. And I'm given the same information the board of directors uh, has and we'll get their perspective. Yes. Because it'll be quite interesting. Oh, that would be fascinating. And for these kids, it's a great opportunity because they're going to have to learn how to supervise adults. Yes. They're going to have to learn how to deal with difficult situations that come up in the warehouse. Yes. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of excited about oh, it. Oh, that's a you great know, idea. Got, I've already trained one. Yes. And I've got two more under training and another one who wants in. Yes. And I hope to get eight. Yes. Yeah. The teenagers have a wonderful desire, a real interest yeah. to serve. They, they, they see the rewards of it. Yeah. And they, they step forward to, to give of themselves yeah. and they receive in the process yeah. these, a rich reward that yeah. makes them want to do more of it. Yeah, I love and to have kids in there. In here. Yeah, great. Great, great. great energy yeah. and, and talking about creativity. Yeah. You'll get their creativity. Yeah. And then we have the things that are going on outside the warehouse with one team that's building our kitchen tables and benches. Yes, yes. And another team that's building bureaus, our own bureaus. Fantastic. And then we have a retired anesthesiologist who takes the leaves from 
large dining room tables yes. that he can't use because they're too big. Mm -hmm. He makes coffee tables out of it. Fantastic. So those are the types of creative activities yes. that, that we can have. I'm sure there'll be more of them as we go yes. forward. And the teenagers might very well come up with an idea of something that they could do as a team. Absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. So here, here's another great example of how you take a team approach. Yeah with people working together to, to make good things happen. Yeah, it's central. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. So, Ron, I can't thank you enough for, for being here. I really appreciate it. It's good to, to have this conversation yes. with you. So you're another example, as I like it's to say. My pleasure. And, and like we all should seek to, uh, plan to be our best as we navigate change. I hope that in all that you do, you'll plan to be your best as you navigate change. Thanks so much for tuning in. You're watching Medfield TV.